May. Yeah. Uh, so we move on to the next talk now, uh, which is by Ghazala Shabuddin, and it's on wetland birds in Haryana. Aminan. Good morning. Today I'll be talking about a nine-year record of wetland birds in Sultanpur Jhil, Haryana, and its potential for studying responses to long-term habitat change. The wetland is located about 45 kilometers from Delhi in the district of Gurgaon in Haryana. It is barely 142 hectares, that is one and a half square kilometers, but over 400 species of birds have been recorded here as of now. It was discovered by bird watchers in 1971 Subsequently, it became a favored spot for birding, and then in 1991, it was declared as a national park. The lake consists of a shallow depression in the agricultural landscape, and it mostly consists of rainfall and some runoff from the surrounding fields. The soils are clay, so that water is retained even up, up to February or March of the year following a heavy or a moderate lands, uh, rain uh, monsoon. The muddy banks keep getting progressively exposed as the dry season goes on, and this provides rich habitat for shorebirds. Here you can see a map of the lake with the lake being shown in the center. The islands are little round circles, uh, which are being, uh, these are islands created artificially as nesting habitat. And then importantly, you have a bund surrounding the lake also created artificially as a viewing area for birds. Beyond the lake, uh, there is a drier habitat of grasslands and woodland, but within the lake, we have large areas of sedges and marshes. In, in December 1985, Kalpavriksh Environmental Action Group started a monthly count, and uh, this count was exhaustive and quantitative with the aim of counting all of the birds present inside the wetland, given that small area, a fixed route was followed one or two observers were common to all of the counts and the counts took place from December 1985 to May 1994. Our coverage of the data uh, is, uh, is about 247 species as of 1994. 55% of these birds are wetland birds and about 45% are terrestrial. The data set is now curated and available on eBirds. Here you can see the monthly count status. That is the number of times a particular month was covered in a bird count. The black bars indicate the counts that were done and the orange that were left out. So you can see that the uh, coverage of the months has been uh, quite uh, good. Some months have not been covered well, such as June and December. However, this wetland has seen an active management phase, such as the development of the buns and the islands, the repeated excavation of the lake bed, uh, the area was also fenced off, whereas earlier it was open uh, to the local villagers for fodder collection, particularly the grasses. And a lot of trees, prosopis and acacia, have been planted on the buns and the islands in this lake. So what we see today is a highly transformed landscape. Here is some mapping that was done by our group from 1989 to 2010, showing that the area of the water spread has considerably reduced whereas the park vegetation has expanded in response to the various habitat changes. What is not seen here is that the depth of the lake has increased from barely a few feet to now a few meters depth. The other visible habitat changes are that the lake shores have become steeper so that the availability of mud flats in the drier season has declined. The marshy areas have also declined. Uh, I also notice a change in the plant species composition in response to this change. Overall, the vegetation biomass has increased in the lake. Here you see the Prosopis juliflora in the lake bed and the woodland habitat has become denser as well. So there are observed changes in gills. Uh, the shore birds are most affected, such as the plovers, the stints, ruff and godwits, shallow water species such as uh, the ducks marshy species such as the avocet, the snipe, and the cranes. Overall, the bird abundance has declined. The wetland specialities that were seen frequently from 1985 to 1994 and the numbers they were seen in has changed considerably. We no longer see the large groups of rosy pelicans or painted stalks. These are the numbers seen in any given month, the maximum number. 
particularly the rough and reef that used to arrive in large clouds in, in some years is not seen anymore. Uh, there were even uh, groups of common crane, uh, up to 400 common cranes that we have seen uh, coming to the wetland in uh, March and in October, December, October to December. And that is no longer to be seen. Avocets also a familiar visitor, no longer to be seen. So this data set is going to allow us to study the effects of habitat changes on wetland bird species and gills. This will be done through resampling in 2021-22 with a 25 year gap. This uh, study will give us good insights on wetland management that we hope to share with the public and with the forest department. I'd like to acknowledge Kalpavriksh members who enthusiastically kept the count going for many years. Pratibha Pandey and Ranjit Lal who were the most inspiring count leaders who made it a point uh, to reach uh, the lake by hook or by crook every first Saturday of a month. Kaushani Mandal and G. Arindran at WWF India have made the maps and Bird Count India has enabled the uploading of this historical data. Thank you to all. Thank you. Sara, thanks for that talk. Yeah. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah. yeah hi. Uh, so th there aren't any questions yet. Uh, we'll give them a couple okay. of seconds. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Sure. Uh, I just wanted to say that we are in the process of uh, analyzing the data now. Uh, in this talk, I've not been able to present any results. Uh, so starting May, in fact, uh, we are starting a re-census of the lake on using the same methodology that was uh, used uh, 25 years ago. So it's going to be interesting and I hope that we are successful in uh, really understanding the changes, both in that nine year period when we had data as well as this yeah. understanding the management changes and the habitat changes over the last 25 years. Yeah, that's very interesting. Uh, a couple of questions have come in now. The first okay. one, uh, Chaitanya, she's, she's asked, uh, is the reduction in uh, wetland specialists due to the fact the lake extent has uh, reduced? Uh, you know, we don't really know. One is that definitely the lake extent has reduced. So the area available for some of the larger birds uh, like flamingos and pelicans is definitely uh, not there anymore. Uh, but I think a lot of it also has to do with the habitat heterogeneity um, that has reduced. Uh, in the beginning, I talked about how the you know, the drying mud banks would be really important for plovers and uh, stints and so on. And we don't have that anymore, partly because the lake tends to dry up sooner than it did earlier. Uh, second, that slope is much steeper now so that the progressive drying of the lake doesn't give those habitats anymore. So we don't know. I mean, that's what we'd really like to find out. Yeah. Uh, Farah has asked, uh, how much habitat has changed in the wetland? How much? Uh, we haven't quantified it. Uh, actually, there is some quantification. Uh, the woodland area has increased and there are figures somewhere, but uh, I don't have it accessible right now. I would guess that woodland area has increased by at least 20% and grasslands have increased also, taking over the, the some of the wetland area that was wet before. So yeah, we haven't been able to quantify it specifically because we use satellite uh, Landsat imagery, which I think we need to improve on the accuracy of the various categories there. Yeah, uh, we'll take one last question. Uh, this is from Mike Prince. Uh, he says, presumably the changes were supposed to be for the benefit of wildlife. So is the conclusion that that is a failure or have many species benefited? Uh, definitely, there are winners uh, in this game. Uh, a, a lot of uh, woodland birds are being spotted now that were not seen there earlier. 
and in larger numbers, but the wetland area has definitely suffered. Uh, and what I would not like to conclude anything till actually we finish the analysis, but, but visibly, yes, the wetland has changed uh, for the worse in terms of numbers and diversity. Uh, there are a few more questions online, uh, but uh, if you could please uh, reply to them on Slack. Uh, and we'll move on to the next talk now. Thank you so much, Ghazala. Thank you.